Hi, I'm Mr. Miller, and this is a lesson on transformations of logarithmic functions. So we're just going to look at one example here. We're going to transform the graph of y equals log base 3 of x to sketch the graph. Um, you know, I don't even like the word sketch because I think people get the wrong impression with that. They think that it doesn't have to be accurate. And actually, we're going to try to do a reasonably good job of this graph. So um, I would just say to graph <laughs> y equals negative 3 log base 3 uh, in brackets x plus 8 over 2 plus 2. OK, good. So um, let's start off with the graph of y equals log base 3 of x. So here are a few points. I'm going to put them on the grid, and then I'm going to explain where they come from. So here are the points I'm going to use. All right, so since it's log base 3 of x, it means that log base 3 of 1 is 0. That's because 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. And log base 3 of 3 is 1. Log base 3 of 9 is 2. And log base 3 of 1 third is negative 1. So we've got a few points to work from here. What we know is that as x gets closer and closer to 0, the log base 3 will get more and more negative. It will go towards negative infinity. And as x gets larger and larger, this will gradually creep up. So I'm going to fill in the shape here, put arrows on the ends. I'm going to draw, uh, sorry, I'm going to label this y equals log base 3 of x because we're going to have another graph on the same grid, and so it's good to have labels on things. So next I'm going to draw a vertical line, and this is the vertical asymptote. It's at x equals 0. And now we can go on to the next one. So this transformed function <clears throat> is also a log base 3, but you can see we've done a bunch of things to it. So first of all, there is a reflection across the x-axis. There's also a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. There's also a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. And finally, it's left 8 and up 2. So there are several transformations to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some new points on this graph. And I'll explain where they're coming from. So starting from the original point here on y equals log base 3 of x, let's do the transformations. So first of all, if we are reflecting across the x-axis, this will be an invariant point. If we're stretching vertically by a factor of 3, this is still an invariant point. If we are horizontally stretching it by a factor of 2, then this point goes from 1, 0 to 2, 0. All right. So we're sitting at 2, 0, and the last thing we need to do is we need to shift it left 8 and up 2. So starting here, I'm going to go left 8 and up 2. Bam! So that explains that point. I'm going to look at the other points that I started with and then um, see where they end up on the new graph. So I'm going to go to, um, maybe I'll do this point next, and we'll see where it goes. So reflecting across the x-axis, it goes here 
to a third and positive 1. Vertically stretched by a factor of 3, it goes to a third and 3. Horizontally stretched by a factor of 2, it goes to 2 thirds and 3, so just slightly over. And finally, we go left 8, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and finally up to 1, 2. Bam! That's the point we get. It's at negative 7 and a third, and 5 is the y coordinate. All right, so that was fun, wasn't it? I think so. Anyways, next, let's take this point and we'll do all the transformations to it. So we reflect it across the x-axis. It's at 3, negative 1. We do a vertical stretch by a factor of 3, so it goes to 3, negative 3. We do a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2, so we go to 6, negative 3, and then we go left 8, and up 2. Bam! That's that point. And finally, I'm going to take this point and I'm going to do the transformations to it. So, first of all, I'm going to do a reflection across the x-axis. So I go to, uh, I think this is 9, negative 2. Next, I do a vertical stretch by a factor of 3. So it goes to 9, negative 6, right there. Next, I do a horizontal expansion by a factor of 2. Now, <laughs> I'm going to be pointing to a spot off the grid, so bear with me for a second here. It's going to be at 9 times 2 is... 18 and negative 6 is the y coordinate. So from here, I'm going to go left 8, which takes me to 10 negative 6, and up 2, and it's at 10 negative 4. That's the final point. So that's all that will fit on this uh, grid. Uh, you could certainly use a table of values to get some other points in between if you want, but what you would find is that as we get closer and closer to x equals negative 8, it goes to positive infinity, and as we go um, x to large values, it creeps lower and lower down here. So I'm going to fill in the shape of this, put arrows on both ends. I'm going to label this as y equals negative 3 log base 3 of, in brackets, x plus 8 all over 2, close brackets, plus 2 on the end. And now I'm going to draw in that vertical asymptote. I'm going to label that vertical asymptote. It's x equals negative 8. And now I have the graph done. So I did the initial graph y equals log base 3 of x. And I did transformations to graph this new one. And here's what we get. The next thing we want to do is we want to talk about all the features. So domain, range, equation of the horizontal asymptote. We want to talk about some intercepts for the function and see how that goes. So um, I'm going to set up a table to talk about all these things. We've got the two functions. And so first of all, domain of y equals log base 3 of x. So that's going to be x is real, but x has to be greater than 0 because you'll notice that this graph doesn't quite get to x equals 0. So it's all of these values that is defined, nothing negative, and not even x equals 0. The other one is x is real and x is greater than negative 8. As you can see that we've got all points up to here, right? Close to negative 8, but not quite equal to negative 8, and certainly nothing on this side. The range, it's y is real for the original function because it extends from negative infinity 
two, and I know it's just very gradually sloping up, but it goes up as large as you uh, would like for it to go. So negative infinity to positive infinity in y. Same thing for the other one. The intercepts. So it's pretty easy to, inter to see this single intercept here. It's at 1, 0. For the other graph, it's not quite so obvious what the intercepts are. So we can estimate them. I can see it's close to negative 4. I can say this is uh, close to negative 2. But I don't have the exact values. So here's what you can do for those. I'm going to put down the um, values here. And then I would just say this. So how do I get this y-intercept is negative 1.78. I mean, I can see that it's close to negative 2, but how do I get the exact value? So you could plug x equals 0 into this and do a calculation. Now, we haven't talked about how do we calculate log base 3 yet, um, but if you have um, the Desmos graphing calculator, it's quite easy to do, and I'll do just a quick demonstration of that right now. So here is the Desmos graphing calculator. And I'm just going to go into this mode because I like it. And I'm going to go into functions. And I'm going to go into miscellaneous. And you can see that there is a log base A. So log base A, now I specify the 3 here. And now I move over and uh, Oh, I forgot, there was supposed to be a negative 3 multiplied out in front, right? So there's the negative 3. In the brackets here, I have um, x plus 2, close brackets, divided by 2. Oh, no, no, I'm sorry, it was x plus 8, wasn't it? x plus 8, sorry, divided by 2. Uh, and then we had the plus 2 on the outside here, right? Yeah, okay. So first of all, um, it's kind of obvious at this point that from Desmos, I can get this and I can get that. Great. Okay. Um, now, even if you didn't have the Desmos graphing calculator, what you could do is, and I'm going to do a little bit of function notation here. I'm going to go f at x is equal to that function. What it allows me to do is now I can evaluate specifically f at 0. Okay? Or alternatively, what you can do, and you notice that that number corresponds to this here, right? Negative 1.786. So you can also just go negative 3 times uh, log base a, and using a is 3, and inside the brackets we've got an x, oh, sorry. So I can uh, plug in the 0 here, 0 plus 8, close brackets, divided by 2, and then close, whoops, close brackets on the whole thing, the argument of the logarithm, and then add 2 to that, and you see we get the same value. So, uh, in terms of finding the x-intercept, at this point the only way we have of getting it is graphically, so using Desmos is totally fine. Um, and then later we can look at how we can do this algebraically without having to resort to a graph. So, uh, that completes this lesson. Certainly I could do more examples of transformations, but we've done a lot of different transformations at this point, so you should be somewhat familiar with that. I would recommend that you do some practice with this using um, logs of different bases and um, see how that goes. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a good day. Bye.